Oh, awesome. All right, this is great. All right. Um, we're doing all, oh, I forgot to hang the phone up. All right, we let's get started. Lost. What did we just lose though? Huh? Oh, Bill, he's signing, signing back on, okay. All right, well, let's get started. I don't wanna hear everyone. Uh, perfect. Hi, Bill. Hello. Um, all right, we'll call the meeting to order at 6.34. Um, and just an FYI as we go forward, this meeting should take under an hour uh, easily. I'd be disappointed if it went over because most of the meeting is, um, you know, just uh, reviewing where we are in the process. And the point of having those updates is so that school committee members could report back if they wish, you know, to their uh, to the school committee. Um, so that people are involved in the town can keep them in the loop. But the important thing is, draws as they're working through these items on the agenda, um, it's important to know what's going on through that process so that in the end, when they produce their, their draft proposal for us to look at, it won't be a surprise and that we, we knew what was in it and uh, some of the touching points you know, along the way including maybe ones that need to go back and get revisited to to finalize it. So um, with that said, if Greg, you could do a roll call vote for a quorum purpose. Oh, uh, as far as uh, who's here, yeah. Alan and Genevieve. we are recording, right? You're recording? Yes. Yep. Perfect, go ahead. Um, Alan Genovese. Present. Deb Loomer. Here. Cliff Hatch, Clifford Hatch. Uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I spatchered. I, I always I, I have a cliff hatch in our town and I always just yeah. wind up deferring to that name. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. No, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, Steve Richter. I'm here. Michelle G. Russo. Here. David Young. Yeah. We see him. <laughs> Looks like I had a car accident behind you. Uh, <laughs> here. <laughs> Bill Toom. Yes. And uh, non-voting member Jennifer Eichhorn. Here. Thank you. Okay, we, I think we got everyone. All right, so. Oh, um, and, and Pat Shear, who's just coming oh, in. Oh yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, perfect. And <laughs> Pat Shear just joined us. Thanks, Pat. All right. Um, so we're going to, uh, con this is being recorded. If we have any technical problems, we'll try to address them immediately. If we're not able to do that, uh, then we'll have to repost and reschedule the meeting. Um, because it's a, well, I guess it's an all remote meeting. All our meeting, all our uh, votes will be taken by roll call vote. And I guess that's enough on that. Uh, minutes of the um, DRAS committee meeting on, or subcommittee meeting on August 20th. Um, or rather uh, 22nd. Those are for informational purposes. I didn't know if anyone had any questions regarding them, but they're to keep you in the loop. And then the hearing none, I'll move on. And then there's, um, we don't have available yet the August 20th minutes of our meeting, but they will be forthcoming. Um, Update meeting with the legislators. Uh, we had Susan Whips and Natalie Blair and Joe Cummingford. Um, Greg, you want to speak to that a little bit? We did have in the packet a couple of um, things. One of them with the first meeting with, with Joe Cummingford, we had a document that we wanted to just share the benefits from. So you've had a chance to review that. And then we had a follow-up meeting with the uh, legislators, the three, and we had a, produced another document just to talking points about that, uh, which um, expanded. So great. Uh, well, I mean, I think you you covered it pretty pretty well. We uh, we kind of just went over the talking points we sent out and uh, made sure we emphasized that uh, it's really the enrollment that drives the uh, the finances with with these districts. And you know, the, they it's it's a lot of things that they've already heard and they have um, been aware of. And, and you know, their point was. Um, regionalization has been kind of beaten to death. And one of the suggestions by Natalie Blay, which was a, a, a great suggestion, was to have us as well as what's happening in Mohawk um, 
and then the Berkshire district uh, regionalization attempt that failed is to pull together those three sort of um, regionalization projects and come to a, some, a, a summary uh, so that they can use that as something fresh uh, and it covers a lot more towns. And so we can use, you know, the, whatever sort of commonalities we're seeing, whether it's declining enrollment is, is causing, you know, these issues um, as well as, you know, both with the um, reduction in opportunities for education and then it drives the finances into held harmless and all the, uh, the problems with that. Um, and then separate out maybe some of the, um, the differences. So for instance, you know, why, why didn't Berkshire pass? Uh, we can get more information. Some of it had to do with the building project that was going on simultaneously where they needed to, uh, you know, basically get an MSBA um, loan across the finish line. And so they were looking for how big the high school was, was going to need to be. And if they were going to regionalize, then it would have to be bigger. And uh, so there was, it was somewhat rushed. And so that, that might be some of what happened, um, but we can get more from them when we have conversations with Jake Eberwine, who is the project manager. And we'll try to synthesize some of the, you know, some of the common things that we found in our regionalization efforts, as well as some of the differences. All right, so just to add to that, there's a couple of takeaways I had. So thanks, Greg, that was, most of what was covered a couple interesting things that came out one of them was i love their new phrase because they are referring to our work as super regionalization when you take multiple towns or or school districts or a combination of districts and towns uh coming together to form a larger one um so that's a word that uh, i'm going to start using more often we're trying to create a super regionalized district um the other thing was it was nice to hear Joe Cummingford talk about the anomaly and the surprise when Pelham and is it Amherst or whoever they were, they uh, they uh, went to form a region or did and they lost. I, I, I thought it was like four million dollars, a significant amount of money. And she was trying to figure out, you know, why that happened. And we were talking about. Uh, in the conversation with them, how if they take away hold harmless, you know, that that is um, uh, unrealistic. They're going to have to figure out a way in the formula to provide an incentive to uh, for districts to regionalize. I made the point and I guess I went on a limb by myself and said um, I could never bring forward to the towns a regionalization, you know, uh, agreement unless there was an insurance assurance that um, that uh, there was going to be incentive money and that we would have uh, hold harmless money or some money to support what we're trying to do. Right now, our budgets at both Pioneer and, and Gil Montague to some extent are being supported by the hold harmless. And when we did the calculations, we used that money as part of it because uh, it's supporting salaries of our professional staff uh, thank you, Karen, for joining us, our professional staff and our paraprofessionals. And so removing that money um, could be problematic. Uh, it also may not be a, a stopper because uh, of other factors. But um, I think we we have their attention about a new base or something has to be done so that that doesn't happen, particularly if the state is going to move forward and try to have um, super regionalization occur. The other piece is, is that we're going to work really hard to have in this agreement a pathway for other uh, districts or towns to come on this so they don't have to form a planning board and go through all those steps. So that's something we've tasked our consultants with exploring language. And they did say that there is language out there. And so we'll see what it is that they come up with. Um, I think those are the other points. So um, Natalie Blay, uh, no, um, Joe Cummingford, when we had our meeting with just her, she suggested that when we go to Desi, that we should, um, uh, she wants to be part of that. And then she recommended we had this meeting with all of them. So everyone's on the same page. So at some point we'll be reaching out to Desi to coordinate a meeting 
uh, with uh, with them and the and the uh, legislators. Um, anything else I missed, Greg? No, I think that that covers it. Any questions? All right, I think they appreciate being in the loop and knowing what's going on. So, David, did you have a question? I have a comment, uh, more than a question, and and that is uh, when Warwick became its own district, uh, they recalculated rather than extrapolate from Warwick's share from Pioneer, and it was beneficial to Warwick. What super regionalization ought to uh, have available is you know the greater of either an extrapolation, a proportional share of uh, mm. what the old district had, or, you know, and it, it certainly didn't apply when Roe was part of Mohawk. You know, that, that was probably the bellwether for the problem. Um, so, you know, Warwick got out of Hold Harmless and, and got into um, foundation support, but, you know, they recalculate and we should get them to go for the greater of. Well, and that's great. That's the thing uh, was that the recalculating actually gets us less. And you're right. We uh, we made that point that if if we're going to receive less, then the state should really kick in the difference uh, in terms of what we lo what we lose in state aid. Because you're right. If we move to a new district, we will not be in hold harmless. They will recalculate and that will become the sort of the base year. So it'll be sort of resetting. But because we've been getting uh, more state aid over so many years in both districts that uh, we're going to lose lose money when we do that. So I agree, David. I mean, that's that was the one of the big points we were trying to make. Uh, if the state could provide an incentive by filling that gap, that would uh, go a long way to uh, you know get the towns on board. OK, I'm going to go to the next um, item, but I do want to recognize that uh, Deb Pate has joined us and Karen O'Neill has joined us. And um, there was someone else. Uh... Cliff. Well, he was on before. Yeah, you probably just saw him come on again. That's all. It's just yeah. those. Two. We're good. Yeah. OK, right. so um, moving on to the. Um, Draz update. Uh, we have Michelle with us. Thank you, Michelle. I know you are on so many committees. I'm I'm not <laughs> sure how you do that, committees and subcommittees. But um, thank you for for still helping us steer the ship on this work. And um, I didn't hear from Chris uh, Hinkle, who's the vice chair, but um, you guys are working together well. So how about an update on where we are there? Unfortunately, I wasn't at the last meeting and I was hoping Chris was going to be here tonight. Um, I think the minutes, you know, I had to read the minutes myself to come up to speed. Um, so from what I've heard, the minutes do reflect um, what happened on in that last meeting. There was a little stalling on, um, what was it, number four or number five? Um, not stalling. They they yeah. really um, talked it through very well. And there were some very good ideas that came out of that. And, um, you know, they were all listened to very well. And um, I think at our next meeting next week, we can try to pick up the pace. So um, we're not falling behind. That's my plan, at least. But I had a rough summer, so I haven't been at many of these meetings or um, the dress meetings. So I'm back again. <laughs> All right, thanks, Michelle. So one of the one of the I think the way we're we're going to uh, proceed is there are some items that are uh, a little um, more complex than others, and so I think we the way we're going to proceed going forward is we're going to look at some uh, proposed language talk through, share ideas, and then have a placeholder to loop back to it and then move on so that we're not spinning two or three meetings around one point that, you know, there's, there's many things that are not going to be as challenging. So uh, that's the strategy we'll be going forward with. Um, one of the issues that uh, will, will be revisited is the closing of a school. And so they had language in there that uh, five out of six towns, if they five out of six towns voted to close the school, the school would close. 
And so there was conversation about Warwick and how much uh, time that they spent to actually open the school. And so uh, there was conversation about, uh, and probably it's Gill and Warwick, um, if they're, uh, you know, have their schools. Um, the, the idea would be that if the town that where the school would close voted not to close it, then they would be responsible for the differential to uh, keep it open so that it's not a burden or a burden is probably not the right word, but so it's not being supported by the other five, five towns to keep it open. And so I had brought this up at our board of selectmen meeting. And I was, you know, encouraged to hear that, uh, you know, one of the comments was it's important to be fair, you know, as long as what's happening is being fair. So we don't have, uh, a solution for that, whether it should be looking at Schedule 3 that is required to be filed or looking at a per pupil cost. But um, we've we've tasked the consultants to come up with some uh, different scenarios on how they could address that. So a school could stay open, but that's the responsibility of that community uh, to to take care of uh, a portion of that. So that will We'll be moving past that one for now and looping back with it. Uh, so it's it's a few things like that that will require more di dialogue. So after we kick around ideas, we'll have the consultant think those through as we continue to march forward, as Michelle uh, has just uh, pointed out. Anything I missed, Greg? No, I mean, I think that's pretty straightforward. It gives the town that... Uh, where the elementary school is is in uh, the power to keep it open. It's just that uh, it allows, well, it, it just creates a scenario where if the other five towns are not uh, happy with that, um, that if that town votes to keep it open, then they can keep it open, but they have to sort of make up the difference of the, the finances, the extra finances that it takes to keep it open. And that's still yet to be determined. And so there was another area that had to do with the middle school and the composition. You know, is it is it six through eight or what is it? And so it was decided by the DRAS committee that that's best left up to the school committee to make that determination um, because things change over time. And so it's just being designated as the middle school will go here. The high school kids would go there. And um, and then the composition is the responsibility of the of the school committee. So we're trying to uh, uh, have this so the school committee has autonomy, but it's also uh, in some of these areas protecting or addressing concerns that the towns towns may have. I'm losing my voice. Their next meeting is September 25th. Greg. Yeah. You okay, Helen? No, go ahead. You go. All right. Hold on. I need to call the, the agenda up here. Um, okay. So the uh, the next meeting for the for the draws is coming up um, uh, this up this upcoming on the twenty. Uh, sorry. It's, yeah. The the twenty fifth. So next Wednesday. Um, the consultants were a little concerned about how how the sections are kind of moving slowly which is why they recommended that we kind of push through and if we get hung up on something to kind of keep going so that we can get um a lot of the boilerplate that is not going to be necessarily deliberated uh for a, for long periods of time to get those kind of across the finish line and then circle back to things that uh that need to be sort of addressed uh, in in a deeper way. Um, it'll just save them time. It'll take some of the stress out of feeling like we're getting hung up on one one issue. What we don't want to do is get stuck on one issue, and you know, go have three or four meetings on it and not be pushing forward. Um, you know, they're they're saying, look, it's a first draft. It's going to go back to the the full board, and it doesn't have to be necessarily complete in all the details and specifics it's better to get through get a, a get a draft 
get the boilerplate that uh, we know we can get done quickly and then circle back and start to focus in on some of the, uh, the things that needed to be discussed, uh, you know, for, for longer periods of time and, and uh, might, you know, take some debate on. So uh, hopefully that, you know, will, will happen. And if I may um, reach out to, uh, let's say Bill, Bill, in terms of the um, Gil Montague School Committee, are 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 you still or someone still, you know, keeping them in the loop of where we are in the process, or should we uh, should we structure that more where they're getting copies of minutes or any thoughts? Uh, no, I think I um, have been keeping them up to date when there's something to inform them and. If I haven't, Cliff can uh, certainly step in and say, no, you haven't. So um, I don't think uh, actually at this point, the district uh, committee is really focused on this per se and is allowing it to uh, develop and want want to hear more uh, a result-oriented discussion than part of the ongoing process. I think that's fair to say. All right, thank you. That's that's very helpful because I hadn't, you know, I didn't have any feedback on how that was moving along. So thank you. I that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, Let's move on to the to the next. It's the we got the strategy for the process of naming new school districts. Just to give you, Alan, to let you know where we are. So that's so, Deb Loomer and Deb Po. Deb yeah. Po. So where we're at is Deb and I met. And uh, we discussed uh, the makeup of the committee. Uh, we rather st strongly felt that uh, involving a lot of students at this point was really not necessary. They really don't care what a district is called, to be quite honest with you. They care about is what their schools are called. And so to drag kids into this discussion and drag them into the next discussion, and like I said, Gil Montague's already gone through this discussion. I didn't think, uh, and Deb and I spoke, was uh, completely necessary. So we're gonna have a student rep from each of the uh, school districts. We're gonna have one rep from each of the towns um, and uh, meet like that. And then uh, public comment, we're gonna try to go through uh, the newsletters. Um, I know Gil has one, we'll use the Montague Reporter. I would ask uh, Michelle what she thinks their uh, best uh, Leiden uh, dissemination is. Deb and I would come up with the uh, the narrative that we would want put in the papers um, and ask them to to mail, send the stuff back, you know, send it to my email, send everything back and see what input we have. And so that would be public input um, from uh, the public, it would include input from every town, um, and it would include uh, input from the students. But once again, um, that's where our thoughts lie or laid. Yep. Deb Pote, anything to add? Um, I think we were just hopefully going to get um, maybe a, a teacher who was from the community. Um, so, uh, I think that was the only thing that Deb maybe didn't mention was that we were going to get someone from the town, and a citizen of the town, but also get a teacher who hopefully is from um, one from each of the districts along with a student. So that would be, um, we decided eight, including us, right, yep. Deb? That would be plenty. Yep. And just um, not to, just something to think about. You may talk, to, you may have talked about it. Uh, uh, if you haven't given some thought, uh, you might want to utilize and talk to um, to uh, uh, Dorinda Bella about the website. You know, is there is there a avenue or a possibility that you see that might have value that people, you know, there's a site or something there that they can go to and click on their ideas, so you're not just getting flooded, you know, with emails. Uh, before you launch this, you know, that's a possibility. So I don't know, maybe it's a good one or not. No, I think that's a great idea. I, I also don't think we'll be flooded. Uh, <laughs> but, 
but having having Durinda certainly put it on the website um, is something that would be helpful and people go there and, and they would uh, have an opportunity through that. Um, and right, so if, we're excited, if we have multiple, maybe we just pick the, the committee picks the top three and then we put it on the website for a vote, you know, mm. maybe. Um, my only thought is I, I'm a, I'll be honest with you, I'm a deadline oriented person. Um, and so I'd like to know the time frame as to when you would like uh, the results from this committee. Well, you have some time. Uh, it's, you know, the timeline we have on here before it goes to the town is in the fall of 2025. So, um, and and then it has to go to Desi uh, before before it goes to the town. So, It'll I don't know. All right. Why don't we? I, why don't we shoot for like a, a February because what, what because what we want to be able to do is uh, have some of that information and proposals ready in the spring to start ramping up our public relations. I mean, we're going to be doing that now, but more so in the spring to really get the towns up to speed. Yep. Yep. I like February. And I don't know if you want to utilize Survey Monkey or something like that to, to if you're a data person to see what people but. That may not be a good idea either. So I, I think you guys are doing a great job. Just go with what you feel makes sense. And and I agree with you. I didn't think about that. I was thinking it'd be good to have the students, but you're right on point. Um, they do care about, you know, what the schools are called. And um, I, I think a represent, representative is, is enough. So good thinking. Um, so my only question, because Deb and I in Bernardston, who or what? Do they have any uh, newsletter that goes out at all, or no one's from Bernardston? Karen, yes. you want to comment? You're on mute, Karen. You're still on mute. There yes, you. there is one that comes out. Um, and if you go to the district website, it there are links to all the school newsletters. Every school in the district has a newsletter. Mm. Okay, so it's not a town oriented one. It's a no. school oriented one. It is. That's right. Um, I think the town also has one, but I'm not sure. Mm. Most of the um, the senior centers have a newsletter, right. so it might that might be that might be what I'm also. right, right. And well, then, for your information, the Leiden newsletter is their deadlines are the 20th of the month for publication it's a monthly okay one of the things i'm uh, i i am always concerned about is the equity of it all so mm -hmm. want to make sure that we're uh getting to each community in the same way sure uh, that we went through the town in one one place and we went through um, the school in another place and we went through the senior center in another place. So <laughs> Deb and I'll Deb and I'll sit down. Absolutely, and I understand talk that. about uh, which way we feel would be the most uh, representative Excellent. for all the towns, right? And then uh, come up with that. And it might be one or two ways, but once again, I think it's important. You know, why did you contact uh, the yeah. Burns, the Northfield Senior Center, and you didn't do the Gil the Montague mm -hmm. Senior Center, yeah. and why did so? In any case, um, right. just always uh, concerned about uh, having it uh, across the board. Right. So, uh, yeah, no, those are great thoughts. I, I guess I put this out to Michelle and Karen. Your thoughts on this? One of the reasons why we weren't able to we decided not to use the PT PTAs or PTOs anywhere was because. Uh, we weren't going to be able to do that in the Pioneer District. So we did not, we decided it wasn't fair. We didn't do it in the Gilmontague District. Mm -hmm. so you had mentioned the schools as an avenue for getting the word out, which is actually the best place for that to happen and to have equity in all the schools in the, in the you know, six town districts. Do you think, has anything changed? Do you think we would be able to have information in the school newsletter to go to parents? I mean, I would I would then have to contact or I, I mean, I don't mind. I'd have to contact the principal of each building 
asking them if they would put that in. My concern there is, I, I guess I would start at uh, the high school um, and see if the principal up there was uh, amenable to doing that. Um, and as soon as one of them said no, then that would shoot that option down. Mm -hmm. And so um, I know. Um, but you know, unless I go to the superintendents, and we know that's not going to work, if I go to the superintendents and ask them to put it out um, in their somehow uh, communications to everyone. Um, so once again, I, I, Deb and I are just going to have to sit down and come up with what we think is equitable. And people might say, well, you didn't ask us. And we would have to, I don't mind being the person who says, well, sorry, but all the towns didn't want it that way. So that's why we chose this way. Mm -hmm. So Deb, just, um, as a quick follow-up, uh, maybe it, if if you ask the principals, the principals are going to ask the superintendent, at, at least in in uh, at at Pioneer. I'm thinking that it might make sense to go to the superintendent first, and and ask her if uh, you know you could, because uh, she'll she'll bring it to a council meeting and and then have all the principals talk about whether they should or shouldn't do it. So um, I don't know. I'm just thinking maybe you start with her and say this is what we'd like to do. We'd be doing this in the Gil Montague district. We want to be, um, you know, have have equity in in our process, and get see, see if we can get her buy in because I, I think it's I think we're just trying to come up with a name to present. We're going to have our committee of a student, probably someone in junior high, a teacher, someone from the community. That's us eight. We're going to brainstorm storm our own name that's how i understand it mm -hmm. we decide to put out that that's the process and that's what we're doing we will let newsletters know senior centers know libraries know town offices know in both districts in all the towns if we go to the next level and we call superintendents i'm not sure we need that much feedback and it's not a contest it's an opportunity to submit some ideas and that's all it is. I think it's a lot more than that. I think it's the best yeah. piece of publicity I have heard since we started this project. Um, so much happens, uh, especially over at Pioneer at the budget level. And uh, I mean, I, I learned about a hundred million dollar new school and, and, uh, and there were attempts to uh, become a middle school despite the, the, uh, district agreement through a budgetary process. So I think for this project to get out there and say, what are we gonna name our new district? And just jump beyond the, are we gonna have it? Uh, could make this far more real. David, could you tell me but, which- but Not if we're being blocked by the superintendent. So, but I also think that there's no problem in saying we've reached out, we weren't able to get positive feedback and that's information for people to know. So that can also be in an article in the recorder. So that's documented. But I don't want to spend tons of time talking about this. Karen, uh, Deb and I are a team, and we're going to work well together, happy for feedback. But I, I don't think I have anything else to say. Deb and I will work on this together, and we'll get back to you about what we've done. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you. Yeah, I don't on. agree. I, I, I mean, go ahead and do that. But I think it's a huge opportunity to publicize uh, super district formation to talk about what are we going to name it yeah well, I think well, it's, yeah yeah well Anybody we can else do agree that. with me yeah, well i agree with you in that you should be doing that we don't have to uh put out that could be an article in itself you know you put out there that this is really exciting we we have a committee they're working on you know naming it and and make it all around the name of this super regionalization district and we can do that publicly and we can do that in the paper and, and not have to say, but we didn't get support here. Let's let's just keep it positive. Right. So I do agree with you, David. There's a way to get it out there. That's fine. But I don't think we need to keep talking about it in this meeting. I think we get it. Got we're going to do everything we can to put it out there. And we're quite capable of doing that. Yep. Pat, did you have anything you wanted to say? 
No, I think it's important to get feedback. I I think we are living in a, I don't know, a, a time where things haven't been shared. And I think it's important to make sure everything is, people know what's going on. Yep. All right. So we're, I think we've covered A, B, and C, right? And that one, Deb, both Debs? Yep. Good? Yep. All right. So launching of the website. Uh, you <laughs> visited it. The link is there. Is there any last minute ideas before we go live on uh, October 1st? Put it out there and get it done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks good. Yeah. Yeah, the only th the only thing that still needs to be updated are the uh, you know the photographs, which is, which I I know uh, Dorinda has been working on. So we'll get get some better photos in there that are more representation of our. I was going to say I went up. I sent Dorinda. I went up to Pioneer and yeah, the general ones and yeah and whatever and and sent them to her. So thank you. Okay, we'll move on that. Um, do we have any items that weren't anticipated? Okay, um, did you have your calendar? Do you have your calendars with you for the uh, Thursday, October 24th? Michelle, is that, um, you're only meeting once a month now at Pioneer, right? You're on mute. Karen, you're on mute. Is that one of your? Um we may have a meeting on we, we, October 24th. We do have a special yeah. school committee meeting, a one agenda special school committee on the 20, what, 4th? 24th, 24th. Yeah. yeah. So that doesn't work for me. And the, the 23rd does not work for me. I'll be on an airplane. <laughs> How about the 22nd, Tuesday? That works for me. How's that sound to folks? Uh, does that coincide with the Montague School Committee or no? Bill, will that work for, where'd Bill go? Oh, there I don't go. have a calendar in front of me, so. <laughs> so it worked <laughs> great then. Oh, Cliff, thanks. When's our yeah, next? Yeah, I think that is one of ours though. I think that's our second one of the month. Yep. <laughs> How about if we go to the 29th, the Tuesday? I don't want to do the 31st because, well, that's Halloween. I don't know if uh, that's usually yeah. good. You want to be with your kids. How about Tuesday, the 29th? I'm still on vacation. Lucky you. Well, first time this year. Yeah. Good. Go for it. Well, yeah. I mean, do we, do we have, can most people make it? I mean, I'm sure for, Karen, for Karen will be heartbroken if she misses the meeting. Yes, I will because, oh, okay. I, let me tell you, I haven't been able to keep up because there are no minutes. I had to miss the last one um, for a death in the family. We're only um, missing one one set of minutes, and that was for right, the last, right, the last and, yeah, minutes. and yeah. that's that. But that had been a long time since the previous one, so I was anxious to see what had been discussed. And we don't record these meetings, do we? Yes, we yes. record. Yeah, yeah, you can go back and watch any of them. Oh, oh, how do I do that? Go to YouTube, type in STRPB, and you'll find all the videos in there. We got our own YouTube. Great, great. Yeah. Okay. Well, you want light. Can we do a thumbs up or a thumbs down for October 29th? <laughs> you can you can also do a hand raise, but it's probably easier. Everyone's hands will stay up. October 29th. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry. Hand raise. We right. got hand. Ha we got. I see Jennifer's hand. Okay, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm trying to put my hand up. Seven. It looks like we'd have a quorum. Thanks, Pat. Yeah, we'd have a quorum. Michelle, will you be able to make that on the 29th? Tuesday? Uh, yes, I believe. Good. So. All right, so let's plan on that then. That will be the full STRB. I'm trying to find my <laughs> phone. And... I don't think there's any other business um, that we need to do. Are we no, good? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh. I'm going to be in Boston for three days. So you're going to have to just go ahead and schedule it. Can you touch bases with Chris to see if 
he could uh, possibly join our meeting, even though he's not the, um, you know, on the planning board, if he could join for the part to just give an update. And I okay. could go, I could go right to that agenda item and have him give his update and then go back and follow the agenda. Okay. okay. All yeah. right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, do you have your hand up, Greg, for a reason? Do you want something else? Oh, to no. Say? Sorry. I just haven't taken it down. Just ignore it for now. I'm setting up a, a Zoom meeting for that that night. So, All right. I said this meeting shouldn't take us more than an hour. It's been 45 minutes. Um, if, if everyone's all set, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Adjourn. So move. Oops. Uh, who wants to get credit for moving it? <laughs> I heard like three voices <laughs> at the same Pat time. Everybody. All right. <laughs> Pat, Pat Shearer for the minutes. Uh, move that we adjourn at uh, 7.45, uh, 7.15. And uh, who seconded it? Everybody. Everyone. <laughs> everyone second. Second by everyone. All right. Um, uh, Alan Genevieve, yes. Sorry. No. Oops. Right, Karen yeah. O'Neill, yes. Deb Loomer. Deb Loomer, yes. Steve Richter. Steve. Yes. Bill. Bill. Yep. Michelle well, said yes. Uh, Deb Pate. Yes. Yes. Uh, Cliff. Yes. David. Yes. And Jennifer Coffin. Yes. And we'll make an announcement next time, Jennifer. And thank you, Jennifer Icorn, for joining us. So we are adjourned. Right. Enjoy you know, your enjoy Deb your evening. Deb Loomer, are you still? Oh, on? Deb Loomer. Oh, yeah, she is. You, you want her to yeah. stay on? Yeah, I wanted to tell her something. Okay. Uh, okay. So I am going to leave. See you later. Bye. 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 I Stop can't. the recording. I like your new uh, technology there, Alan. Oh, yeah. oh I've got, I have Spectrum now. I, I, yeah. I can now stay home. He's at least <laughs> up to 1990s. I mean, you know. <laughs> Devil Hammer, I'm sending you an email about Leiden Life. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. 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 Take care. Ah, I'll send you an email. If I leave, then then the meeting's over. So you wanted to talk to you. She must have left already, though, because she'd answer me if I was talking to her. Yeah, she said goodbye to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she did. <laughs> Just a little wave and say bye. <laughs> oh, all right. Have fun, Greg. All right. Have a good one. Take care. You too.